Now there's a whole bunch of people who want to learn more about Linux. In fact, they may even consider switching from Windows to Linux if they could really become familiar with the Linux environment. But of course, to try and install it on your main PC is probably a bit dangerous because you don't want to just switch uh, straight away. You might want to install it on a second-hand PC, but maybe that would just be too much effort. You don't have the time. Wouldn't it be good if you could kind of stay in your Windows environment and yet install Linux and use it inside of that? Well, you can using a virtual machine. That's a PC running inside of a PC. You get a window into a virtual PC. And from there, you can use Linux as much as you want. Learn all about it, test it out, see if it really does what you want. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Linux Mint as a virtual machine using Hyper-V. That's Microsoft's built-in hypervisor. And then I'm going to give you a tour of the Linux desktop, the real simple stuff. This is where the start menu is. This is the taskbar. This is how you maximize the window. This is how you minimize the window. This is how you install software. All that kind of stuff. Real simple to ease you in to that first Linux experience. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the first thing we should do is enable Hyper-V. That's a component built into Windows and for the Pro versions that allows you to create virtual machines. Really simple to do. Bring up the Start menu and then search for Turn Windows Features On or Off. That will allow you to go into the Control Panel. You get this small window with a list of all the different things. And you notice one of them here is Hyper-V. You want to tick that and then click on OK. That will go ahead and enable that feature on Windows. Once that's done, you may need to reboot. The next step is to get hold of a copy of Linux. In this case, I'm going to be using Linux Mint 22.2. Go to linuxmint.com, hit this download button, scroll down here to the Cinnamon Edition, click download, scroll down to where you find a mirror near you and click on the link. That will start the download and it should be saved in your downloads folder. Okay, now that we have Hyper-V installed and we have a copy of Linux Mint, the next thing is to run the Hyper-V Manager. So type Hyper-V here at the Start menu and click on the Hyper-V Manager. Now here is the Hyper-V Manager. Obviously, it's a very complete, fully functional program. We won't go into too many of the details. We'll go through the simplest steps now of what you need to do. So what you need to do is go over to here where it says New virtual machine okay and we're it's going to go through this wizard to help us set up the machine so click next so we're going to type in here linux mint 22.2 okay and we get to pick where we want to store the virtual hard drives you could just leave it here i'm going to pick somewhere else i've got more disk space on another drive okay so i've selected a hyper v driver on my j drive let's go next okay Pick generation two, don't worry about that, that's fine. Generation two. Now we want to have an amount of memory. I've got quite a lot of memory here in my machine, so I'm going to up this to 8192. 4096 is great if you don't have that much memory on your PC. Click next. What type of networking connection I want? I want the default switch that will allow the virtual machine to also access the internet. Then we want to create a virtual hard disk to go with this. Uh, 127 gigabytes is fine. Notice here this is in that folder that I uh, picked earlier on. It will be wherever you've set it to, including that default space if that's where you left it. Click Next. Install an operating system later. No, I want to install it now. So install an operating system from a bootable CD. Yes. From an ISO image. Yes. Which one? The one we downloaded. So I've gone and picked the Linux Mint ISO file that's in my downloads directory. And then we click Next again. Okay, here's the final summary of what we're doing. Yep, that's all great. Click Finish. And it will go ahead and create that virtual machine. Now, before we run it, we want to do one quick thing. Select the machine here in the list of machines. Click Settings. Then go over to here to so Security. And we want to disable Secure Boot. That just makes your life easiest by doing that. Click on OK. And now we can start it. How do you do that? Double click one way brings up a window, which is where the virtual machine will run and you can click start. Here it's brought up the boot menu. Just press enter to start Linux Mint booting. OK, so now Linux Mint has come up in a live desktop. This is actually Linux Mint. You can actually use this and start doing things, but we're not going to do that now. Instead, we're going to install it. So install Linux Mint is an icon here on the desktop. Just double click on it. And this will now take us through the install process. You can pick your language. If it's not English, I'm going to stay on English. Click continue. 
Okay, US keyboard is fine by me. Continue. Install the multimedia codex. Yes, please. Continue. Erase all of the disk. Yes, because we're using that virtual disk inside of a virtual machine, we've got nothing to lose here. So we'll just say yes, go ahead and install that, please. It will say, well, are you sure I'm going to do this to this disk? Yes, yes, that's fine, please. You can now pick your time zone and then click on continue and you get a chance to type in your name. This is creating a user account. So I'm going to put in Gary Sims, the computer's name. I'm going to call Linux Mint VM virtual machine. Gary is a good username for me. And then I'm going to type in a short password that I use for my virtual machines. Easy for me to remember. You type in whatever password you'd like to use. Click continue. OK, once the installation is complete, we get this dialog telling us it's complete. We can do restart now. Please remove the installation mean and press OK. That all happens automatically inside of Hyper-V. That's not a problem. And the virtual machine, that's the one running inside the window, the virtual machine will reboot and up comes Linux Mint. OK, so here there's login prompt. I need to type in that password that I set during the installation process. And here is the desktop. Now there's a welcome screen, which I don't think we need to go through. So we'll untick this, show this dialogue at the start and just close that. Now to make the experience better, you're going to want to change the screen size. So if I just minimize that there, look here, you can see this window is running on my desktop. I would like it to be full screen. Now if I go up here and expand this, what I get is this huge black border around the outside because this is still the display size and it's quite small. So what I want to do is you go over to here to the Linux Mint menu. That's the start menu. If you're used to the Windows world of things, go to preferences and then scroll down here until display. Because I'm changing the display preferences. Now I've got a full HD monitor, so I can select the resolution here to 1920 by 1080. Hit apply. It will change it. Yes, I want to keep that. And now you can see that I actually have got full screen uh, desktop. I can get rid of this bar here as well. That will disappear because it's no longer pinned. There we go. Now it looks like I'm running Linux directly on my screen. And in fact, this is a virtual machine. OK, so now we're going to look at some introductory tips on how you use the Linux desktop. OK, so here's the desktop. This is obviously the wallpaper. Along the bottom here, we have a bar. Over here on the left hand side, we have the start menu, which we'll go into in a minute. And then here you have some different apps that are already pinned onto the bar, for example, files and Firefox for browsing the web. Over here on the right hand side, you have kind of the tray icons, including how you can connect uh, to the network, the sound control, the clock with a calendar and so on. Let's go back to the start menu here. You can scroll through the different types of categories, so office tools, internet tools, or if you have uh, something in mind, you can just search. So you can type calc, for example, to get here the calculator. And here we have a calculator, nothing particularly uh, amazing, you know, exactly everything you would uh, expect. But I wanted to show you how you can use a, a windowed app. You can click here in the taskbar and of course just move it around as you'd expect. This one here makes it full screen. This one brings it back down again. Then the one to the left, the little underline here minimizes it, it goes down here onto the bar so you can bring it back up again. And of course, the X closes it. Very familiar if you've been using Windows or Mac OS. The positions may be different to Mac OS, for example, but the principles are exactly the same. Another thing you can access from the start menu is the control centers. So you can go up here and click on this little icon. And this is the system settings allow you to change all kinds of things about your system, the displays, the power, the networking, the mice, the keyboard, and all that kind of stuff. Let's take something simple. Let's go with the background, for example. We can pick a different background. Look, there you go, a nice green one, different one like that. You know, let's just drag that aside. Look, OK, so all very, very simple. Now, you also notice there as I drag that to the side, you can do this kind of docking thing where the windows can appear in different parts of the screen without any problem whatsoever. So you can arrange all of your windows as you want. Let me go back to that original one there. So for web browsing, you've got Firefox built in. So we go down here, we click on the Firefox web browser icon. Up comes Firefox. You can start searching. You can type in, you know, uh, go to YouTube, for example, here and get that to come up. Things like YouTube will just work out of the box. This is all the standard websites will work uh, without any problem whatsoever. For Office documents, you'll want to go up here to Office. And let's say we go to LibreOffice Writer. So LibreOffice is a suite of applications similar to the Office suite. So you've got a document, 
uh, editor, you've got a uh, spreadsheet, you've got slides. So here we can just start to type. This is a document, you know, nothing particularly amazing. We can change the font size here, just as you would expect uh, on a normal Microsoft uh, Office document. Now we can save this. So let's just save that. And we're, I'm doing this now. It notice it says Gary documents. So there's a, a folder called documents. Okay. And we're just going to call it doc one. How imaginative. Okay. Now you can select different types of documents here, including you can save it as different word documents. So that's really, really good. Gives you some compatibility there. We're going to save that. Now, why did I do that? Cause I always wanted to show you the kind of the file explorer down here again, in the left hand corner, click on files. So here it is. We can, you know, we can put it on the docket to the left there, dock it to the right. We can make it full screen. Okay. But if we go into documents here, here you can see that document we had, of course, double click will bring up the document in LibreOffice Writer. But I also wanted to show you, you can do things like rename, you know, whatever. So you right hand click on it. Okay. Scroll down here, rename. We could call it uh, document one rather than doc one. Of course we can copy it. So you can do a right hand click, uh, copy and now right hand click here paste now we get a sucking document a copy of it okay anything you could do normally with what you're used to on windows what you're used to on the mac exactly the same here. and you've got different folders for pictures and music and videos and downloads is a very important one if you download something that's where you're going to find it now another important application is how you install software so again to the start menu click on this one here which is the software manager and now basically with uh, systems like Linux and Linux Mint you get a whole bunch of pre-built applications you don't have to go scouring around the web for the different things you need they're all available here uh, under one banner kind of a store very similar to the Microsoft store or to the store that you have on Android, Google Play, or the iTunes store. And here you can find all kinds of things. Look, for example, VLC was just up there, Blender, Audacity, Discord, Telegram, all the things you might want. Now, if you're looking to install a different web browser, of course, we could install Chrome. That would be a popular one. Uh, it's called Chromium because it's the open source version, not the version that comes from Google. So you can search for it. Up comes Chromium. We just click Install. Okay, type in the password for uh, you know authorization to make sure I have the right to install things on this system. And then that will go ahead and install it and then we can run it. Now we can either launch it from here, but you probably won't have that open normally. So again, down to the start menu into the internet section. There it is there. Okay, we can just run Chromium. Now, of course, we can also pin this to the taskbar, right hand click on there, pin to panel. So it stays there permanently now. So even if I close that, I can just click on it there uh, and up it comes. So very, very easy to do all kinds of software in there that you might want to find for development, for music, for video, for whatever. You'll find it in there. No problem. Now, like all operating systems, whether that's Windows, Mac OS, Linux, of course, Android, iPhone, there are software updates to fix bugs and also to uh, fix security problems. And we have here the update manager, which comes built into Mint uh, Linux Mint. And this is the introduction screen. We just click on OK. And it shows me here all of the things that can be updated. So it's a really, really simple. All you have to do is click on install updates and it will go ahead and install those for you. It's a pretty painless operation, but something you should do regularly to make sure you have all the latest updates. Now, one other thing to mention, you've probably noticed this bar comes up from time to time that uh, allows me here to minimize and to exit away from this virtual machine. So this is actually a remote display connection using RDP. OK, and you can pin it, as I showed you right at the beginning there, so it'll stay there permanently. But that's a bit annoying then because it, it won't go away and it hides what's underneath it. But this is how you'd exit out of here. If you exit out of here, it's still running. You can come back to the virtual machine. It doesn't close down the virtual machine, just close down your view into it. So that's particularly here because we're running this inside of Hyper-V. And the final, final thing to say is if you want to exit out of your machine, other than just using that bar I showed, you can go to here to the start menu and then go down here to shut down and you can shut down, restart and so on. And there you have it. Love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.